And a very good evening to Omni Solord with the CBC Evening News. And our top story, Education Minister Ronald Jones is satisfied that the almost 3,500 students who wrote this year's 11 plus exam did their best. And he wants the parents to accept the results. He made the remarks at a news conference this morning at his Constitution Road headquarters and Peter Thorne reports. Education Minister Ronald Jones says almost 3,300 of the near 3,500 students who wrote this year's 11 plus exam have been allocated to the 22 secondary schools across Barbados. 3,297 or 94.7% were allocated places in the public secondary schools. 94.7%. Compared to 2014, where 96.3% were allocated places. Um, the other students who would not have been allocated in the routine um, way, where the technology takes over, um, 111 were allocated by the Ministry of Education place in schools. Mr. Jones says this is the first time in recent memory that there has been an even split of five females and five males in the top ten performers in the island. To me that augurs well because they're saying that they're boys who generally are stepping up there's a whole cluster of movement there. Um, that is good. Mr. Jones says the Section C part of the mass paper was challenging, reflecting real-life scenarios. I challenge you to do the interpretation and analysis. It was challenging. And if you're able to, 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 to respond to the challenge, you would necessarily get it right. Minister Jones says he's satisfied that the students did their best and parents should accept this. From my vantage point, knowing the, what I call the difficulty curve of the, 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 the papers generally, that students generally perform reasonably well. Minister Jones says the allocation is done based on the choices of parents and the ministry won't be tolerating any burden of requests for transfers this year. He says this resulted in some classes last year having as many as 36 students, when 30 or under is most desirable. He says of a special concern this year was the fact that 84 boys filled the bottom performers compared to 16 girls, while several students scored less than 10 marks in the mass paper. Peter Thorne, CBC News. Well, hard work and dedication, sacrifice and faith in God. That's what the top performers in the 2015 Common Entrance Exam and their parents said helped them achieve their goals. Lisa Broom visited some of the schools today. Best birthday gift ever. 11-year-old Jasmine Simmons describing the results of her top performance in the Common Entrance Examination. She scored 100 in mathematics, 98 in English, and an A in the composition, and heads to Harrison College in September. She says she worked hard. Very excited, like happy, and knowing, I'm relieved, knowing that it's over and the results are bad and I did really well. So, like, I could, like, just relax. All the tension is gone. Jasmine, her younger sister Lydia, and her friends were buzzing with excitement once the principal returned to the school and started announcing the results. That excitement jumped to another level when her mother, Kayla, arrived. I got to help with social studies and science, but I, I have to give credit to her and her father. <laughs> Kayla says Jasmine is carrying on the tradition of excellence set by her great-grandfather, who attended St. Angela's, and the celebrations will include him as well. This was so big because he has been amazing to us. We love him so much and he is a little older and was ill and kind of just waiting to do anything until he he couldn't do anything until these results came back. So we're going by his house. <laughs> Things were a bit more subdued over at St. Winifred's where Gemma Evelyn still had to be officially informed that she scored 249.12 with an A in the composition. Gemma, who is also going to Harrison College, says she gave up listening to her iPod, but stuck with dance and piano while preparing for the exam. I was really worried and I thought I was going to do really bad in the math. And Dante Small of Arthur Smith Primary was the top boy and fifth on the island overall. He will attend Harrison College come September. While Dante couldn't explain how he felt about the results, he did share his winning formula. I prepared by revising on a regular basis and even when 
the teacher doesn't see it to take your bus take the bus home and reverse. I will take extra bus and reverse. The budding batsman has his eyes set on making and helping to bring the West Indies team back to its former glory. Congratulations to all the students who took the exam. Lisa Broom, CBC News. And we'll bring you more of the top performers in the examination in tomorrow night's newscast. Well, the Ministry of Transport will be asking for more traffic inspectors. This from the Minister Michael Lashley, who was speaking on the scene of yesterday's accident at the entrance of the nursery drive terminal. A 14-year-old Springer schoolgirl was severely injured in that accident. Mr. Lashley says while the Road Traffic Act is in place and the long-promised amendments to it are about 95% complete, there's still a problem enforcing and monitoring the laws. At present, we only have, I think, about six um, traffic inspectors. But their powers are limited under the law as it stands. We've just applied to the civil service for at least eight more traffic inspectors. And we are currently looking at the law to empower those traffic inspectors so that they will have um, just as equal power as the police, but not the similar power. But they will have powers that we can now properly regulate the uh, drivers and the conductors. After the issue of a combined $20 million in government savings bonds, the appetite for those bonds continues to be high. Now, just two days after the central bank started the second $10 million issue of savings bonds, just like the first, that issue has also sold out. As a result, the bank announced that another issue worth $25 million went on sale today. Senior operations officer at the bank, Linnell Franken, says they have increased the size of the tranche to ensure that everyone who is interested in investing in savings bonds is able to get them. Franklin confirmed that the pricing and rate will remain the same for the new series. That is $76.24 per $100, which represents a yield to maturity of 5.5%. And we'll have more news in just a moment, but first we want to get your take on this question. Does it appear as though the standard of education is higher at private schools compared with public schools? You can text yes or no to short code 8111 and we'll have the results for you at the end of the news. further with Saul. At Line, we don't need any tricks or gimmicks. We treat all our prepaid customers like MVPs. MVP means maximum value per person, maximum respect. Subscribe to any one gig 30 day data plan and enjoy a reduced calling rate of just 49 cents to any network, any landline, anytime. With Line, you pay just 49 cents and call any phone in Barbados, so you won't have to top up as often. Put data on your phone and keep your money in your pocket with Lime MVP. When you need space to grow, there's nothing like the home you own. Let Scotiabank open the door for you with competitive rates and support every step of the way. Visit us today and discover what's possible. Relive all the action, all the excitement. Get your keepsake copy of the 2015 Knapsack and BSAC semifinals and finals for $100 each. Watch hours of local athletics as schools compete for gold and bragging rights. Call 467-5538 and place your order now.
Minister of Finance Chris Sinclair says a solution must be found where those who own sugar lands can continue to invest in them. He says at present Barbados is not producing sugar economically and methods must be found to make the industry viable again. Mr. Sinclair made the comments to reporters at the courtyard at Marriott in response to plans for Sajakor Financial Corporation to pull out of sugar. They own a fairly substantial portion of uh, land and we can't just let them exit and leave this agricultural land. It's not land for development. So you can't just leave uh, that type of land uh, laying fallow and, um, and growing in bush. So, um, you know, depending on what decision they take, we will have a discussion with them and we'll see how it, uh, what, what needs to be done to ensure that. Because that is going to be critical to the... Uh, Kane industry restructuring project. Absolutely critical. Marketing and resource manager of Cooperatives General Insurance Company, Cheryl Ford, is concerned about people who are coming last minute for insurance when there is a hurricane watch. Ms. Ford is encouraging Barbadians to get insurance early. She believes that people need to abandon the notion that God is a Bajan. We have found that people wait till um, a pending, when you hear that something is coming, then they want to come in the same day, but we do not do insurance the same day. And because that's not safe. That's not safe. But what we want to encourage people to come before and take out the insurance because it is important. You can't wait to the last minute to be now looking the same day to hear a hurricane is coming this morning and, and running to the insurance coming the afternoon to get insurance. We don't accept insurance like that. Now, Ms. Ford was speaking at the launch of the company's discount card. Policyholders and potential policyholders will get a 10% discount when they shop at Talius Caribbean, Simmons Electrical Company, and Easy Pave Incorporation this hurricane season. The card will be valid for one year. Ms. Ford says there's also insurance for timber houses. I know that there is insurance coverage for timber houses. People have been inquiring about it. But all our requirement is that you have your ground sill sealed. As long as that ground sill is sealed, we will insure your property. Meantime, three of the island's charities have received some much-needed assistance from the Insurance Corporation of Barbados Limited. They received a donation at an award ceremony for this year's Fun Walk and Run. Senior Vice President of Business Development and Management, Alex Tasker says although fitness was a major part of the event, the real focus was raising funds for the charities. We always want to make sure that those areas of our, our um, people who are in, de are in need um, also find, we find time to give them some support as well. So if we walk or run, if we go outside and sell coconut breads or whatever it can be, we will give and continue to give to the main charities that we have to. Mr. Tasker lauded the commitment of the St. Leonard's Boys School and the Eden Lodge Primary to supporting the charity event. Now in its sixth year, the fun walk and run attracted up to 2,300 people. Mr. Tasker believes that more Barbadians are supporting charitable causes and he's encouraging them to view these events as a priority. A rare attempt to showcase Barbados and the exceptional debating skills of some secondary school students at the World School Debating Competition may be in jeopardy. That's if the organizers fail to secure additional funds. Faculty advisor of the Harrison College Debating Society, Carl Applewitz, says a six-member team still requires some $40,000 in the next 10 days in order to meet the payment deadline. The club has held several fundraising activities, including cake sales at the school compound, but Mr. Applewitz says they still have missed the target. We need to do this within the next 10 to 14 days. That is how close we are looking at. at because we've, the deadline, as I said, for Singapore was earlier because they're doing the logistics of the tournament, so th that money has to be in early. But we can negotiate with airlines that are based here to extend the payment dates and things of that sort. So the next 10 to 14 days essentially are crucial because we can't have a situation where we've paid everything in Singapore and then we can't get to Singapore. And some of the team members stress the importance of the competition and the ways in which debating has assisted with their personal development.
when you see debating in Barbados, it isn't as quite developed or isn't as developed as it could be. If you look at nations like Australia, they have debating competitions all year round where their children get to engage in intellectual discussions all the time. Nations like Singapore and England. And this is like debating is an intellectually engaging activity and is the opportunity for children to be intellectually engaging. And that's important, I think, for society and important for school children. Debating is like another class, another subject. And we have learnt and mastered to tackle not only our academic subjects but also our debating because we do, we do several events, oratorical competitions, we do model United Nations, so that's the primary thing, time management skills and how to speak, how to acquire ourselves and how to research. Well still to come, look at some of the stories making headlines across our region, but first a reminder that we want to hear from you on this question. Does it appear as though the standard of education is higher at private schools compared with public schools? You can